Today I wanted to share with you four things to consider before you pick the songs for your service. Those four things are theme, key, tempo, and focus. Theme, key, tempo, and focus. First off, theme. Whenever you're picking songs for, for, your, for, your, for your services, always try and think about what theme do I have. Oftentimes, uh, worship leaders will just pick, or worship teams, however you do it, will pick songs somewhat at random. Um, and they'll say, oh, I like this song, so I should do this song. But the truth is that when you're picking a song, it would usually help people to engage within the audience to engage more with the songs and with the worship and with the process if there's a clear theme that you're trying to get across. Maybe, for instance, uh, you could have your your theme for the day or for that for that service to be God's faithfulness, and maybe you could have songs that just reinforce that or that show God is faithful in this or in this and that. You know, great is your faithfulness, or you know, uh, whatever. And then uh, as you build this set, you're you're really helping people to understand this theme and the different implications of the theme and the different aspects of that theme. So theme, uh, a good example of this is maybe your whole service, maybe your, your whole set, I mean, is about God being all powerful. And then to wrap it up, you, you do a song like um, Sovereign Over Us. Um, you know, your plans are still, your, your plans are still good. You know, uh, you're, you're working in this situation for your glory. You're doing it for our benefit, you know, all this stuff. And so you just spent all the songs talking about how God is in control. He's all powerful. He's just bigger than we can we can hope or, or imagine. And then you tie it up with this idea that, yes, this all-powerful God is still sovereign over us. He still has plans for us. He hasn't forgotten us. All these things that seem like bad, chaotic situations are going to be turned for something that glorifies him. See, now you've given that last song new meaning. The previous songs have given the last song new meaning. So the first of the four considerations, consider the theme of the set. The second, remember, theme, key. The second uh, uh, consideration you want to have before you pick out your songs is what keys are these songs in? Sometimes worship leaders give no consideration to the, to, to the keys. That's a big mistake. First off, if you have every single song in the same key, things get to be very monotone. Um, not very exciting. It loses people's attention. Now, you might say, I'm not here to get people's attention. I'm here to glorify God. Yes, and I totally agree. But remember that we as people think certain ways, and music is definitely something that we feel, and it's something that, that we express. We, we could all get together and just say a statement that says something about God. God is faithful. But in worship, it's supposed to be something that involves more than just logic. It's supposed to be something that involves the heart. And one of the best ways to involve the heart is to be passionate with your music. Passionate. So, um, another example is sometimes le leaders will go in a key and they'll go way far down and back up or whatever. Here's the thing. Whenever you go down a key, like let's say you start in A and you end in G, there's going to be a drag back. Now that's going to give the impression of loss. Uh, uh, it's going to give an impression of, of it's just not going to flow very well. If you start, let's say, the morning in, in the key of G and you end in the key of A, you've gone up, it feels like you're ascending somewhere. So people are going to be more on board with that. Typically, you, you want to you go away from going down a key um, unless you're intentionally trying to bring a lull or, or to, trying to bring a, a, a down, um, a, a digression or a, a, um, a heavier attitude. Now, once again, that can work if you're careful and sparing with it, but typically you're going to want to go either um, drastic key changes, like let's say you're in B and then all of a sudden you're in G with you know maybe tran um, maybe just stopping the music and starting again or maybe doing a nice little transition into it either or maybe um, at the end of a bridge of a song you can do a little um, step up from like one key to another key um, or something like that but typically you're either going to want to um, stay in the same key for a couple songs and then maybe go up or go um, go to two drastically different keys um, with with no with no kind of transition, you're, you're not you're not going to want to stay in the same key the whole set, and you're definitely not going to want to go down unless you have a specific game plan for doing that. So the first consideration was theme. Consider the theme of your set. The second one was key. Consider what keys you are going in. You typically don't want to start in a high key 
in the morning service because people's voice will be a lot strained. It'll be harder for you. It'll be harder on your voice, and it'll it'll sound strained. So maybe start off if you do want to go high later on in the set. Maybe start off with a fast song or something like that that's kind of lower and then kind of build to a higher key. That can work, uh, but you don't want to start off too high too early because your voice will be cracking. It just won't be good. So the first consideration was consider your theme. The second one was consider your key. The third is consider your tempo. Oftentimes worship leaders will just go crazy. They'll just do whatever songs in whatever order, and they'll maybe like to end on a triumphant note, so they'll want something that picks up at the end. Here's the problem. You have to consider what's after worship. Are you going into a time of, worship, of uh, prayer? Are you going into a time of just just quiet? Are you going straight into the message? You know what what's what, what's coming up next, and you're going to want to think about that uh, because if you if you just change tempos like crazy, it's not going to work too much. Also, um, consider consider keeping to one set tempo in a song. Um, sometimes uh, worship leaders will in, during the song go crazy with the tempo in the in the song itself, and so it really won't have like this song's 120 BPM. It'll be just whatever verse one will start out in 120 then it'll go down to 60 then it'll be an 80 in the chorus and you see what i mean you, you, you can't do that kind of stuff you can speed up and slow down the tempo in some examples and i'll give you some um let's say you start off the song slower than usual and then you kind of do a build up into the chorus and then you stick with that faster tempo that works another thing that works sometimes is if if you're doing a faster song and then you kind of slow it down to maybe half or something like that um, to do like kind of a closing or a, or a bridge. But once again, you're really going to, going to want to be careful with this because you, you can really mess yourself up. Let's say you have two fast songs back to back and you don't want it to be solid fast because here's the thing. The moments of quiet in a song are going to give the, the most meaning in your song. Okay, So let's say you've got these two fast songs. You can do an interlude between them with the slow part. Now you're going to watch out for the uh, – because if they're in the same key, no problem. But if they're in two different keys – it's not going to work like you think. You're going to have to really work through it, maybe even practice it. Um, so, so consider the tempo. Usually in a, in a set, you want the fastest songs to be at the beginning, the slowest ones to be at the end. That's the basic outline. You can play around with this and do exceptions, but make sure that your exceptions aren't something that you do every single week. You know, if I um, every single week do the same predictable thing, then it's not going to have emotion. It's not going to have meaning anymore. It's something that I practice and do just to do it. And you don't want music to get stale. Music is supposed to be expressive. It's supposed to be from the heart. If things get stale in music, it's not really even music anymore. It's basically like singing a really boring sentence. So uh, keep that in mind. So there was theme. What is the message of my set? Second was keys. What is the overall um, uh, key of my, of my set? Am I going up? Am I building to something? Am I just kind of leveling off? What am I doing here? <clears throat> Third off was tempo. Am I slowly bringing it down from an from an area of not paying attention to intently paying attention, from you know being excited and, and talking to people to now slowing down and, and, and communing with God? You know, am I am I directing people in a direction, or am I just Remember, as a worship leader, your job is to direct people. You are leading the people in worship. So with that being said, you have to be intentional with the things that you do. So the fourth thing was focus. Focus. Now, a lot of songs with worship are about different things. Some of them are more about me. God helped me to do this thing. Or maybe something that I've gone through. Then other songs are, are pretty much just focused on God. No, Really no mention of us. Um, uh, your love, O oh Lord, stretch, uh, reaches to the mountains, you know, stuff like that, where it's just, it's all about God. Um, it, and then sometimes songs have, have a mix of the two. Now, typically, you're going to want your focus to go more to, at the end, you want it to be more towards God. At the beginning, not necess necessarily so much. You know, like, for instance, there's a song, I Saw the Light. It's more a beat. It's more, um, you know, you know, I, I wandered so endless, a life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior and things like that. Okay, all right. So it's more, more you. Okay, that's fine. You know, it's upbeat and everything. People are just getting in there. They're not really focused. Maybe they got in a fight on the way to church. Maybe they were doing. Maybe they've been working on a big project. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. But now that we've kind of roped them in, you remember, it's like public speaking class. They tell you to have a hook. The same thing is true for, for music. You can't expect people from, to go straight from their house into the presence of God. You have to lead them there. Now, 
I want to kind of give a little bit of a disclosure there. Jesus leads us into the holy presence, so I, I don't want to I don't want to overstate our job. But as musicians, you can't just play a song and expect for everybody to like the song. You have to play the song in such a way where people feel like it's theirs that they can actually join with you in the song. Um, oftentimes, worship leaders will play a song that maybe is popular and just expect for the popularity to carry it. Like, oh, this is a fad song, so if I'll do it, people will automatically be in the presence. Well. Let me give you an example. How great is our God? Okay, the song starts great, you know, uh, but you know, then what? See what I mean? You've got to find some way to lead people from a focus to a clear, a clear pointed focus. Maybe the last song be "How Great Is Our God," for instance, and the first song be "I Saw the Light." See, it's it's a progression between me or my situation or the problem or how God intervened in the situation, whatever, you know. Um, there's a song by the Newsboys, uh, Great Is Your Faithfulness. Um, if I hide, you know, still you're going to find me and all this stuff. Lord, your goodness, it, 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 it's, it's always there. You know, your, your faithfulness, all this stuff. And then you go and maybe end with a song that's more about God and his goodness and his, his, his power, his otherness, you know, stuff like that. Where is there, where there's a, a clear focus from this topic to this topic. Because remember, people aren't just going to walk in and be ready to worship. Oftentimes they'll be with this attitude. <sighs> Let's get through it so I can get home. And once again, it's not your job to do God's job. It's not your job to speak to their hearts or to soften them or to whatever. Your job is simply to lead them by showing how to worship, by worshiping yourself, and by being sensitive to the attitude of the room. So with that being said, these four considerations every single time that you are picking out a set. What's my theme? Uh, what's, what are the keys? What's the tempo? And what's the focus? Remember those four things and every single time you pick out a set.